Miroslav, you talked about how uh, the great world religions, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, but in our instance, Christianity, a great instantiation of a secondary religion always has the temptation of slipping back into a focus on primary religious goods. Uh, what does that look like in our time and in our faith Christianity? Uh, I, I think all these secondary religions have the temptation to compromise their original vision. Um, I'll let other people speak about their own religion. I'm uh, a, a very happily, uh, I very happily embrace the Christian faith. So I think I can also, uh, with a tear or two, speak about malfunction of uh, Christian faith. And when you look and observe Christian faith through the centuries, you see, I think, two major malfunctions of faith. Um, and malfunction of faith, by the way, that is such that faith itself is reconfigured <laughs> in the process of its malfunctioning. Mm. It's not discrepancy simply between theory and practice. It's the disease within the theory itself mm -hmm. that happens, and uh, that will be a, a, a longer discussion to, to have. But one of those malfunctions is high level of identification between a particular religion, Christian faith, and a particular nation or particular ethnic group or particular territorial people in a particular territorial domain. As if then God is the God of this people rather than being God of all people, right? as if God is there to serve the flourishing and ascendance and maybe even dominance of a particular political, ethnic, or territorial entity rather than being a God of the whole humanity. So universality of faith then is sacrifice at the altar of particular kinds of interests. Now, the, the other malfunction uh, of faith would be when faith is very closely tied to kind of natural ends of our ordinary life, uh, health, wealth, fertility, and longevity. And generally what happens in, in contemporary settings, it's tied too much with kind of economic success. And then faith becomes kind of this energizing power that helps me achieve the goals that I set for myself. It becomes uh, then a kind of this healing balm. I call it in, in the book a public faith. I call it uh, religion as performance enhancing drug or religion as divine band-aid. But in a major way, it has become very much like what the primary religions are, serving the same, uh, the same ends. And it has betrayed its larger transcendent end of orienting one's life around God, uh, around universal commitments that come from the commands of God. And you can see then in this both, the, the, the way what happens then in the first case, where faith identifies too close to, with, a, uh, with the ethnic group or a nation, it becomes coercive. It wants to impose itself also upon the whole, and often it wants to imp uh, uh, impose itself or participates in the battle that a particular whole has with other wholes, right? Uh, in the case of its too close tie of a tie with, um, with natural uh, ends of uh, flourishing or with economic su success, it brackets then the whole orienting function of faith and becomes simply a service mechanism for economic uh, or other forms of success. And faith in some ways is idling. It's not doing its most important work. So you have coerciveness of faith and idleness of faith accompanying its devolution, so to speak, into a primary, uh, forms of primary religion. I think those are the great malfunctions of faith. There are others as well. But these are, I think, the major ones that beset uh, Christian faith, have beset Christian faith through the centuries. They're still with us, and that I think it's very important for us to fight, not in the name of some other goal external to the faith, but in the name of the gospel of Jesus Christ, in the name of the life of the one 
who lived before us the very existence of God, who died and rose again for our salvation and indeed for salvation of the whole world.